Hi everyone, this is Mista. As you can see, um, these are our class slides. I've tried to structure them in the same way that we do in class so you won't be confused about what you're doing at any given point. So just like in class, I'd like you guys actually to pause the video when you see do nows and try to think about the questions on your own. So at this very cold temperature on the moon of Neptune, what phase would carbon dioxide likely be in? And what, if anything, limits how cold something can get? What is temperature? So again, pause thinking about that. All right, you'll probably want to get your notes out um, just because writing things down helps learn. So before we begin, I'd like to introduce our new unit, weather. So unit three, weather, is all about um, gases, like the gases that we have in our atmosphere. These kinds of gas laws that we're going to be learning are um, the same ideas govern how gases in our atmosphere move and what weather is formed. Of course, you guys already had exposure to this in earth science, I believe, so we're not actually going to be taking that weather-themed uh, an approach to this topic, kind of like smells. We introduced it once and then didn't talk about it a ton. Um, that's kind of how weather will be, especially since we're doing it remotely. Um, that said, uh, I wanted to give you an overview of the topic. So we're going to think about gases, um, just like we thought about, you know, Solutions. What do solutions look like when you zoom all the way in? What does the air that we breathe in look like? Um, what are the molecules in air doing all the time? And it turns out that will be explained by something called kinetic molecular theory, KMT. And week two, that's this week, we're going to talk about that. Kinetic molecular theory, you can think of it like we explored a bunch of atomic models, like Dalton's atom versus like the plum pudding atom. Kinetic molecular theory is the model that we have for gases in chemistry. Um, we'll also look at how do temperature, volume, and pressure relate to each other when talking about gases. So like, if you increase the temperature, what happens to the volume? If you decrease the volume, what happens to the pressure? Um, and then these will actually be called Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law. Um, and this will also be this week. You can actually bring all of these variables together. And so looking at multiple variables or other variables like the number of particles, we actually get to some more gas laws. Um, Avogadro's law and then the ideal gas law combines them all. Um, and that'll be next week. And finally, um, in week four, we're going to bring everything together, this as well as what, the end of toxins, and actually do some gas stoichiometry. Um, and that that's it. These couple weeks will wrap up weather entirely. So we're going to be doing weather entirely remotely. Okay, um, so Monday's suggestion is to look at 3.5, which is about the Kelvin scale. Um, you may or may not have ever heard of it, but either way, that's all right. Um, I'm going to have these new slides kind of like an agenda. Ideally, you'll be able to do numbers 1, 2, and 3 by the end of the lesson, or by the end of today, Monday. So. The first one, talking about Celsius and Kelvin, you can actually go to workbook 3.5 part 1, pause now and look at that if you'd like. Uh, I'll just go, go on through and keep talking about them. Um, so Celsius, Kelvin, Fahrenheit, what are these things? Basically they're all just temperature scales. They're all different ways to measure temperature. You may have converted between Fahrenheit and Celsius before um, in some class. So you might remember there was some long formula to get degrees Fahrenheit, you had to multiply the degrees Celsius by 9 fifths and then add 32. You could also go backwards with either algebra if you like solve for C over here, you can figure out this is the equivalent thing. Um, and it turns out there is a formula for converting Celsius to Kelvin as well, um, for some reason that we'll find out soon. Negative 273 degrees Celsius is the same as zero Kelvin. Um, so there's a formula to get from Celsius to Kelvin, you just add 273. Um, pretty simple. One small thing to note is that um, Kelvin does not have a degree sign, whereas Celsius and Fahrenheit do. I would say, you know, it's whatever, 700 Kelvin, not 700 degrees Kelvin. That's just the way things are. That's a very hot temperature, by the way. Um, yeah, you wouldn't find that on Earth. Okay. So they're all just temperature scales, that's what they are. Okay, so what does this have to do with gases or anything like that? Well, um, switching kind of topics to kinetic molecular theory, that's what the KMT stands for. 
Uh, Cam T says some stuff about how gas molecules move. Um, and we pretend in chemistry, just to simplify things, the first model we'll learn is KMT, and it says that all gases are quote-unquote ideal gases. They're perfect. They behave under certain assumptions. Um, we have to make assumptions in our model, right? Models are simplifications of reality. So what does the KMT model assume? It says, well, gas particles are constantly moving. If you imagine the particles in the air right now, they're flying all over the place. Um, always. They never stop. Okay, and then second, the motion is actually random. It's not like the gas molecules will all decide to go like to the that corner over there. Um, they're going to be moving around randomly. Each one moves independently of the others. Um, they also move in straight lines. So it's not like they're curving around in weird spirals. Um, if you've taken physics, kind of, it's like the object in motion staying in motion. They're just moving in straight lines. No forces are moving on them. They're bouncing off the walls, um, moving in straight lines. And actually, the speeds of particles are not all the same. So there's different speeds involved. Uh, in, in your room right now, there are molecules of, let's say, nitrogen and oxygen, and each one might be going at a slightly different speed. It's kind of a distribution of speeds. Um, to kind of figure out what this actually means, you can see simulation one on the weekly guide. Uh, in the simulation, I'll just click it now so you can see. In the simulation, you can click ideal as in ideal gas. And you pull this pump here and then, wow, gas molecules come in. Now let's take a look at what happens. They kind of move each individual ones in a straight line. They're bouncing off. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're evenly distributed yet, but over time they will be. I can heat it up and they'll start moving faster. You might imagine that would happen, but they're kind of bouncing around. Um, again, this is all linked in the weekly guide. Um, so you can take a look at it yourself and there are accompanying questions to kind of figure out what you're supposed to be even looking at. Okay, so what is temperature. You might have noticed the thermometer over there. Um, temperature is a weird concept, but or like it's only take for granted, but first you have to start by defining kinetic energy. You might have heard of it as the energy of motion uh, moving around. It depends on two things. You can see it depends, the equation has two variables you plug in, the mass and the velocity. And it's mv squared, so the velocity matters a little bit more in some sense than the mass. And temperature is actually a way, a measure of kinetic energy. So if you have the same um, kinetic, if the molecules in your sample of gas have some average kinetic energy, let's call it like, I don't know, 100 joules, and another sample has the same average energy, 100 joules, that means when you measure their temperature, they'll be the same. Temperature is the measurement you get when you check out the average kinetic energy of molecules in your sample. Okay, what does that mean? Well, a few things um, come out of this, I guess. So one thing you can, this is from the Pogel, um, but one thing is as you speed up your particles, that means you have higher kinetic energy because Ke equals one half mv squared. The v goes up, so the Ke goes up. Kinetic energy goes up means you get a higher temperature. And as you can see here, um, the 500 degrees Celsius one has faster molecules in the hole. So again, the x-axis is particle speed. Another consequence of this definition of temperature is that um, if you have a different mass particle, um, different speed speeds in that sample will actually lead to the same temperature as if you had a less massive thing um, that was moving at high velocity. So because Ke equals one half mv squared, if I make the mass go up and the velocity go down, I can actually keep the Ke constant. Um, again, this is something you can investigate in the Pogel, but you can see that the helium, the smallest noble gas, um, has a lot of more its molecules, it has more faster molecules um, than the xenon, say, which is very heavy. So again, two consequences of KMT. 
And third, um, this section talks about absolute zero. So what is absolute zero? Um, basically, all temperature scales are based on something. Um, the Celsius scale is very reasonably based on the temperature at which water boils, 100, and at which it freezes, 0. And then everything else um, falls linearly in between. The Fahrenheit system, like um, the rest of the non-metric system, is a bit strange, um, but that's fine. The Kelvin scale's reference point um, is defined by its 0. It's the temperature at which all motion stops. If there's no motion, there's no kinetic energy. It's where all the kinetic um, energy is gone, because V is zero. If V is zero, Ke is also zero. This is a theoretical thing. Um, you can't actually get to absolute zero, uh, or at least uh, it's, it is something that people have gotten very close to, but it takes a lot of specialized lab equipment. Um, so absolute zero is zero K, where nothing moves anymore, the coldest you can possibly get. Um, like, what would it mean even to have negative, um, a negative Kelvin temperature? That doesn't make much sense. Um, yes, it's been done in research, but that's because of technical definitions we won't get into. Uh, but things moving backwards are still things moving, right? They still have velocity and mass. They still have kinetic energy. So um, here's some results you might have had in your workbook. Okay, all that said, um, today you should kind of understand that KMT exists, kinetic molecular theory. Uh, try to understand the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution a bit. Um, that'll get you a better sense of what temperature is. But basically, there exists a scale called the Kelvin scale. We use it to measure temperatures in chemistry. Uh, it's based on where motion stops. Motion, um, temperature is a measure of motion, and gas molecules move in a certain way based on KMT. All right, um, I will post something else at least by tomorrow. Um, hopefully the rest of them so you can move ahead if you'd like. Slides are all here though, so if you want to go ahead, feel free to. Have a good one.